Many legendary names uh, down through the years have played wide receiver in the Pac-12, and we are looking forward to 2015 right here on Mark Rogers TV, ranking the top five at each position in the Pac-12 conference. I bring in a forum of Pac-12 experts here. we got Mike W.R. from Gojo Bruin, Don King from Last Word on Sports, and also Shane Roberts from The Block U on SB Nation. So, gentlemen, we're going to run down the top five, then I will give my humble opinion and hopefully be able to somewhere stay within the uh, the realm of reality of uh, who are the best players at this position in the Pac-12. So, Mike, we're going to start with you. If you can run down the top five as you see it at receiver. Okay, I'm going to go uh, number uh, from five to one. Um, I like Caleb Jones at Arizona. I think he's a pretty solid receiver, and he's doing really good things in Rich Rod's uh, program. And it's it's... It's kind of it's it's fantastic what what Rich Rod is doing, you know, not from a, an opposing team standpoint, but at the same time he's doing you know some fantastic stuff. I know you guys probably talked about him uh, in, the, in the quarterback conversation with Anu Solomon. I mean, the, the guy was a freshman and and he he led Arizona to the Pac-12 championship. But uh, I like what uh, Caleb is doing right now. Um, but uh, I kind of have a, a a tie for number two. The uh, uh, Cal has some fantastic wide receivers and. It's taken some time for the Golden Bears to, to get going and, and for uh, Mike McIntyre to to, um, uh, to, get, uh, to get things going at Cal, but I think with uh, Jared Goff and um, Kenny Lawler and, and Steven uh, Johnson, uh, Anderson, Steven Anderson, uh, they're going to be fantastic, although I think they share that spot because uh, at number three, I like Nelson Spruce. Unfortunately, he seems to be the only talent at Colorado. You know, I wish uh, Colorado would um, uh, make uh, bigger steps than they have been, but right now, Nelson Spruce, I mean, that, that, that kid is just fantastic. If he was on any other Pac-12 team, I, I have a feeling he would be on, you know, several uh, top wide receiver lists. Um, and then I'm going to go with, uh, th this is a hard one. Th these are my top two uh, wide receivers. Uh, Juju Smith at number two, and uh, Byron Marshall uh, at number one for Oregon. Um, you know, for for being a, a UCLA fan, uh, you just you don't want to see a talent like Juju Smith, but you, USC has him, and he, that kid is fantastic. He's he's incredible. The way he, he can contort in the air, the way he moves on the field, uh, he's that kid's phenomenal. Uh, he that he's going to be an NFL player one day. But the guy that I really like, the one that is is probably probably going to bridge the gap from the uh, Marcus Mariota to the Vernon Adams uh, era. Is, is going to be um, Byron Marshall. I mean, what else can you say about this kid? He's fast. He, he has great hands. He's smart. And, you know, he's an upperclassman now. So, you know, I don't, he, he's, he's number one in my book. All right, Mike, I hate to break it to you, but that's six wide receivers. We asked for a top five. I don't know if I, know, I can add it back it, on it, here. It's, it's those hell cool. receivers that you know, I, I just can't decide. I know that was my bad, but <laughs> I, I, right. Cal, I think, is going to be really impressive with their receiving game. Uh, now, if they can only get their defense going. But, yeah, sorry about the six. <laughs> Good stuff. Six wide receivers. So just more guys to talk about. All right, let's go with Shane here. Let's run down the top five for you at receiver, Shane. Yeah, receiver is a, uh, it, uh, it's a Pac-12 position. I think that's just needless to say. There's there's going to be talent all over the conference. Um, I'll start from five as well. I, I had Byron Marshall at number five. Um, uh, he, he's just, uh, as we talked about the running back conversation, he converted from running back to wide receiver. Uh, he, he seamlessly transitioned over. Um, and any time that you have a skill position within the Oregon offense, there's going to be yards and there's going to be points to be had. No doubt about that. Number four, I actually have Jordan Payton from UCLA. Um, he very solid, very good wide receiver. Had over a thousand yards last year. He was Brent Hundley's go-to guy. Um, I expect that to be for whoever the the heir apparent to Hundley is down in Westwood this year. Number three, I got Caleb Jones for, down in, in Arizona. Again, another thousand-yard receiver. Very good. Uh, kind of similar to the Oregon style things. Anytime Rich Rod has an offensive scheme. You're going to have running backs get yards, wide receivers get yards. All they do is get yards. That's, that's what they do. And Caleb Jones is going to step up, and he's going to do that again. Um, uh, at number two, I have Nelson Spruce from Colorado. Um, that dude, he's open all day long. Obviously, they probably don't have anybody else in the field that can get open, but that's <laughs> the one dude on the field that's going to get open who's going to get yards. Um, 
he was a pain. He is a pain uh, against UCLA. He was a pain against Utah. He's just the constant thorn in the side. Yeah. Any de any defensive coordinator, you say you just have to find Spruce, and you think you're good, but the dude's going to get his yards. It's unbelievable. And then number one, Juju Smith. Um, USC's just been cranking these guys out for the last half a decade to a decade. Everywhere from Nelson Nelson Aguilar to um, to uh, Robert Woods to Marquise Lee. Uh, I mean, they, they just sim similar thing with running backs. They just reach over, grab one, pull one in, and say go. And they have a first round talent just instantly ready to go. Um, it, the embarrassment of riches uh, at SC is just incredible. So. Uh, again, my top five uh, from one to five: Juju Smith, uh, Nelson Spruce, Caleb Jones, Jordan Payton, and Byron Marshall. Yeah, I was running through USC wide receivers in my head, going all the way back to Lynn Swan. So yeah, yeah. they just—it's USC yeah. over yeah. and over yeah. again. Yeah. all over the place. Sorry, Mike, but you know the history. No, definitely. You got the upper hand right now, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you know the history. So you pull the Homer with with the. Uh, the running back, Paul Perkins, at number one, but then you leave Jordan Payton off the list, and Shane's got him at number four. Right. So, <laughs> do, so does Don. Okay, so let's go to Don, and let's hear where he's got Jordan Payton ranked in the rest of his top five here. My top five is a lot like Shane's. Number five, I've got Byron Marshall. Um, and if we were talking number of receptions and yards after the catch, he'd probably be number one. Um, because he is dynamic, he is highly intelligent, he is a mature player with tons of Division One experience. Um, he is going to be electric in the Oregon offense, uh, but I also think it, it's going to be balanced, and Oregon is always, contrary to what some people think, it's always kind of a run-first offense, and I think it'll be more so in 2015. So I've got Marshall at number five. I've got Jordan Payton of UCLA at number four. Love his game, love his playmaking ability. He is going to rack up a ton of yards this season. There's no question about that. Um, really solid player. Um, the, the key question is who's going to be throwing it to him. Uh, I, I have a hunch it's going to be the true freshman, but I still think he's going to be okay. Um, number three, I've got Nelson Spruce from Colorado. Um, very similar to what Shane said, he's the one cat they've got. So they're going to, they're, you know, if they're going to have any kind of a season at all, he's going to have to be transcendent. Uh, the, the, the bad thing for the rest of the conference is he might just be good enough to do it. Um, a, a ton of talent uh, in, in this kid. Uh, number two, I had Caleb Jones from Arizona. I, I like him, I think, a bit better than everybody else who's commented on, on him so far, far. So my list is like Shane, but I, I, I think I had Spruce and Jones flipped. Um, I, I got him at number two and, and, and think he is going to just absolutely light it up. Um, in Anu Solomon's second year as starter down there uh, for, for the Bear Down uh, Arizona Wildcats. Um, and number one, Juju Smith, and there's not that much else to say about it. Um, he's an unbelievable athlete, um, and, and ironically, um, you know, given that, that uh, his, his running buddy and athlete who came in last season with him uh, is now going to play cornerback more or less full-time, that's going to free up the field for Smith even more. He's expect him to be uh, talked about as a as a potential Bolitnikov candidate uh, this season. I think he's going to have that good a year, and he's got a very strong quarterback throwing to him in Kessler. Good list, Don. Let's uh, go to my top five here. So, the senior this year, Jordan Payton, UCLA. I've got him at number five. Uh, caught the game winner against Texas. Caught 67, seven touchdowns. I went with Juju Smith. I, th I thought I was ahead of the curve here thinking, okay, freshman, I know that he was an off-the-charts recruit, four and five stars all over the place, and I thought, yeah, he didn't have huge productivity as a, as a freshman. I'm going to project you know, 75, 80 catches this year after he caught 54. He looked really good in the bowl game against Nebraska, made some big plays, but coming into a sophomore season, you guys love Juju across the board. At yep. one, one, and two, I've got him at number four. Number three, I've got Byron Marshall. We've 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 all alluded to the fact that he's a thousand yard, fourteen touchdown running back in 2013, who converts to a 74 reception, thousand yard receiver. That's pretty amazing, right there. Uh, still gave him the ball out of the backfield 52 times, and he ran it for 7.5 per carry. Coming into a senior season, he's obviously going to have to help out as. Uh, 
Mike alluded to, new quarterback Vernon Adams there at Oregon. Number two, I li- love uh, Caleb Jones like uh, most of you guys really did uh, at the number two position. Uh, only caught two passes this season before, really exploded onto the season, onto the scene this past season. 73 catches, nine touchdowns coming into his junior campaign. And in Rich Rod's offense, the numbers could really skyrocket even from there. And out of sheer production, I'm going to side uh, with some of the comments that Shane made about Nelson Spruce out of Colorado. 106 catches, 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns. We don't see him play a whole lot, but he's racking up uh, production there. Uh, for that offense for the Buffs, and hopefully they can win a game in the Pac-12 this season. So I'm learning that uh, I'll pay more attention to Juju Smith. Uh, The talent didn't pass on me there, but wasn't expecting the productivity quite yet as a sophomore to to rank with the best in the the Pac-12, so I had him down at four, but you guys love him, and rightfully so. So good stuff out of Mike W.R. of Gojo Bruin. Don King, last word on sports. And uh, Shane Roberts, uh, block you on the SB Nation platform. So, guys, before we let you go, anyone want to jump in with anybody off the radar that we didn't mention here? I'll give you one name. Um, Gabe Marks, Washington State. Uh, In in the air raid offense up there, he's going to get a lot of balls coming his way. Keep an eye on him. I I, I don't know that I trust the the quarterback, whoever it's going to be, uh, following Connor Halliday, uh, who's departed for the NFL. But keep your eyes open for Gabe Marks. Uh, I think he's going to have a very strong season as well. All right, very good. I've got one as well. Um, okay. I'm, I'm going to go a little bit homer on this one. Uh, I'm going with Kenneth Scott from Utah. Um, the dude has got NFL size. He's got NFL body. He's got NFL hands. Uh, assuming that Devontae Booker is Devontae Booker this year, there's going to be plenty of space in the, for it. Uh, in the passing game for Scott to get some serious damage. I'm a huge fan of his. Um, so if Travis Wilson has time, he'll hit Scott, and Scott will be kind of a dark dark horse sneaker for a good 1,000-yard season. And I'm going to put down Jordan Payton as Mike's uh, off-the-radar wide receiver. Yes and no. Uh, (laughs) Even though I think he's going to do fantastic things for UCLA, uh, the, the, the Bruins have been doing really well recruiting uh, wide receivers, and I would I would like to have Jordan Payton in, Jordan Payton in my top five. But the guy to look for on the Bruins, Eldridge Massington. He's big, fast, fantastic hands, and he did great things last year, and is just going to continue this year with um, <coughs> Josh Rosen. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I think with with the transfer of Asante uh, Willard. Uh, it's Rosen's to lose. So um, right now, and in UCLA's uh, spread offense, there's so many wide receivers, but Massington and Jordan Payton, you're going to hear those two names a lot. Okay, I take it that UCLA Nation is rooting for Josh Rosen to, to win the job there at UCLA. Yeah. But we, Massington, we look, I was going to ask look, you for a sleeper. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you for a sleeper there, Mike, because I know that uh, Mora has really recruited at wide receiver and defensive back, even more so than across the board. Uh, he's really pulled in some great talent there. So we got a name to, to hang our hats on upcoming in uh, UCLA camp. So thanks, gentlemen, for the top five. Really uh, enjoyed the discussion. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Have a great evening. Thanks, Mark. Take care. <laughs>